What's up guys, I'm Ari Rochelle and this is Too Deep. In the first two parts, we discuss that other gods are in fact real, as well as what those other gods could be. So if you haven't seen those two videos, I suggest you check them out because they're pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. And as I said, we got into what kind of beings those other gods are. Specifically, we talked about the host of heaven. But does that mean that they're the only kind of beings that are gods? Well, when Moses and the Israelites left Egypt, God warned them of worshipping the gods of the people of Canaan in a way that he hadn't really talked about gods before. So let's take a look at that real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 29 through 31. When the Lord your God cuts off before you the nations whom you go in to dispossess, and you dispossess them and dwell in their land, take care that you be not ensnared to follow them after they have been destroyed before you, and that you do not inquire about their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods, that I also may do the same? You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way, for every abominable thing that the Lord hates they have done for their gods, for they even burn their sons and their daughters in the fire for their gods. Did you catch what God said about the gods of Canaan? Their worship was filled with every abominable thing that the Lord hates. Did you notice this isn't really how God describes any other God? When God judges the gods in Psalms 82, this isn't even mentioned. Why is that? If they're gods and they're receiving every abominable thing that God hates as worship, wouldn't that be something that the Lord brings up in the judgment that's recorded in Psalms 82? Instead, God judges the gods for something entirely different. Let's read that real quick. Psalms 82, 1-4. through four. God has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Selah. Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. God doesn't even mention worship. If it's every abominable act that God hates, why wouldn't he mention it when he was judging them? Now, some could say it's because the judgment that we get a glimpse of in Psalms 82, it happened before they accepted that kind of worship, which would make sense. It's similar to the issue with the sons of God and the daughters of men, which you can check out in our mini video series, The Sons of God, which is under our Too Deep category. With that said, there still seems to be something different about these gods than the gods of Egypt. The sacrifice of children wasn't a part of the worship of the gods of Egypt. But we do see this all throughout the land of Canaan. In fact, long after Moses' time, God punishes the people for worshiping new gods. Jeremiah chapter 19 verses 4 through 5. Because the people have forsaken me and have profaned this place by making offerings in it to other gods whom neither they nor their fathers nor the kings of Judah have known, and because they have filled this place with the blood of innocents and have built the high places of Baal to burn their sons in the fire as burnt offerings to Baal, which I did not command or decree, nor did it come into my mind. What I find interesting is that God separates the other gods that their fathers nor the kings of Judah knew, and the spilling of innocent blood and child sacrifice to Baal. For more on Baal, check out our video, Baal and Asherah, which is under our Too Deep category. So was that God's way of saying that Baal wasn't a god, or was he saying that Baal was different than these new gods that they started worshipping? Well, let's take a look at what God says about the gods of Canaan, when the people of Israel are about to enter the land. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verses 15 through 18. But Jeshurun grew fat and wicked. You grew fat, stout, and sleek. Then he forsook God who made him and scoffed at the rock of his salvation. They stirred him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed to demons that were no gods, to gods they had never known, to new gods that had come recently whom your fathers had never dreaded. You were unmindful of the rock that bore you, and you forgot the God who gave you birth. According to God, the gods of Canaan weren't gods, but instead they were demons. 
Now, something that blows my mind every time I think about it is that the word demons or demon is only used twice in the Old Testament. If we take a look at the second verse the term demon is used in, we'll see the same sentiment as before. Psalms 106 verses 36 through 39. They served their idols, which became a snare to them. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to the demons. They poured out innocent blood the blood of their sons and daughters whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Thus they became unclean by their acts and played the whore in their deeds. The sacrifice of children is once again connected to demons. Could it be that the gods of Canaan weren't actually gods, but were demons? I mean, the gods of Egypt, they didn't demand human sacrifice, especially not child sacrifice, while this seems to be the desire of the gods of Canaan. If this worship is connected to demons and not actual gods, then could it be that the gods of Canaan, such as Baal, weren't actually gods but demons? This would make sense, then, why Elijah mocks Baal the way that he does in 1 Kings chapter 18. Here's a little background for you. Elijah's going in... 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah in order to prove whose God is the one true God. The prophets of Baal go first and this is how Elijah responds to them. 1 Kings chapter 26 verse 29. And they took the bowl that was given them and they prepared it and called upon the name of Baal from morning until noon saying, O Baal, answer us. But there was no voice and no one answered. And they limped around the altar that they had made. And at noon, Elijah mocked them, saying, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is musing, or he is relieving himself, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their custom with swords and lances until the blood gushed out upon them. And as midday passed, they raved on until the time of the offering of the oblation, but there was no voice. No one answered. No one paid attention. That's such an odd thing to say about a god, isn't it? It's almost like Elijah is mocking them, not just because he knows that his god is god of all gods, but because he knows that their god isn't even a god. You don't see the mocking of another god the way that Elijah mocks Baal. Oh, he's relieving himself. Oh, he's sleeping. Better scream a little bit louder. It's it's very odd. Now one could say that Second Kings chapter twenty one verses two through six contradicts the idea that the gods, specifically the host of heaven, didn't accept child sacrifice as worship. So let's just read that real quick. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to this, the despicable practices of the nations whom the Lord drove out before the people of Israel. For he rebuilt the high places that Hezekiah his father had destroyed, and he erected altars for Baal and made an Asherah, as Ahab king of Israel had done, and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. And he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, In Jerusalem will I put my name. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he burned his son as an offering and used fortune telling and omens and dealt with mediums and with necromancers. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Notice how it doesn't say that he sacrificed his children on the altar to the host of heaven, just that he sacrificed his children on the altar. One thing to notice is that it starts with the altars of Baal, and then it goes to the altars to the host of heaven. Then it explains that he sacrificed his children, and then it explains that he used fortune telling and omens. So then could it be that the first altar to Baal received the child sacrifice, and the second altar to the host of heaven was used for fortune telling and omens? Check out Isaiah chapter 47 verse 13. It says, You are wearied with your many counsels. Let them stand forth and save you, those who divide the heavens, who gaze at the stars, who at the new moons make known what shall come upon you. According to God, people were using the signs in the heavens in order to tell the future. So could this be what they were using the altar for the host of heaven for? So let's just sum everything up for you guys. 
the gods of old are real, and some of them are the hosts of heaven. And the demons are the false gods, if you will, that those in the land of Canaan worshipped. Demons are bloodthirsty and desire child sacrifice, human sacrifice, blood worship, whereas there isn't any evidence that this was a desire of the gods of old. The gods of old also were used to tell the future, which hasn't changed to this day. We still use astrology to tell the future. The gods and demons are different and they desire different acts of worship. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.